It's February 28th, 2010. It's the final day of the Winter Olympics, taking place in Vancouver, Canada. All eyes are on the gold medal game between USA and Canada, a historic rivalry between two of the most talented hockey countries in the world. The score is tied at two all, with the game already deep into overtime. But the stakes of this moment couldn't be any higher. For Team USA, it's all about defying the odds. They've been heavy underdogs the whole tournament, even in this game, clawing back from a two-goal deficit to tie the score with just 30 seconds left to play. What was once thought to be a disappointing roster is just one goal away from stealing the gold medal. But for Team Canada, this moment would define a nation. In search of their 14th gold medal, Canada has the chance to make Olympics history on their home soil. Hockey was their sport, and they had the chance to prove it right here in what is the most viewed hockey match of all time. And this is what happened. The golden goal is one of the most iconic sports moments of all time. You've probably seen clips of it countless times before, but the significance of this goal is a lot more than you think, for both the players involved and the countries themselves. But at one point, it looked like this situation would never happen. Olympic hockey has been around since before even the Winter Olympics existed. The first tournament was actually held at the Summer Games in Antwerp in 1920 and consisted of seven competing teams. But early on in its history, hockey was dominated by two main countries, Canada and the US. In the inaugural tournament, both teams dominated the rest of their competitors, winning every game by at least 10 goals. But in the gold medal match, it was Canada who prevailed winning 2-0 to claim the first gold medal in the sport's history. And for the next 30 years, Canada continued to dominate on the world stage. They won gold at six of the seven next Olympics, beating USA three more times in the finals. But in 1956, Canada's reign of superiority began to slip, but it wasn't the US who took their place. Instead, it was the Soviet Union the Soviets had created their own professional league and were able to internally develop some of the strongest players in the world. And against the mostly amateur teams at the Olympics, they dominated. The Soviets competed at their first Olympic Games in 1956, beating both Canada and USA to win the gold medal. This was the first of seven gold medals over the next nine Olympics, a stretch of dominance spanning all the way to 1992. Their only two defeats came at the hands of Team USA, who won in both 1960 and 1980, the latter of which was named the Miracle on Ice, thanks to an incredible third period comeback from Team USA, defeating a Soviet squad that went undefeated for 12 straight years. As for Canada, their hockey dominance was long gone. They managed only two bronze medals in that same 30 year stretch even failing to medal as the host country in Calgary in 1988. But one key change to the Olympics format would shift the entire landscape of Olympic hockey forever. For a long time, the Olympics were restricted to amateur athletes only. This gave a significant advantage to the Soviet Union, since their hockey leagues were not considered professional, and gave them a significant advantage in the Olympics over other countries. But in 1988, the IOC greenlit professional athletes to compete in the Olympics for the first time. This was a huge boost to the Canadian team, as over 70% of professional NHL players were Canadian at the time. The US also benefited from this change, recruiting many top NHL players to join their team. The first time these professionals took the world stage was in 1998, and although they were the two favorites, Canada and USA both disappointed, falling to the eventual champions, Czech Republic, and neither team was even able to medal. But the 2002 Olympics was a different story, as both teams cruised their way to the gold medal match in Salt Lake City. 
It was their first time meeting in the finals since 1952 and was a clash between the best players in the world. The game was highly entertaining, with the score tied at 2-2 heading into the final frame. But Canada put three more goals past the home team in the third period and won their first hockey gold medal in 50 years. Unfortunately, the 2006 Olympics was a major disappointment. Both countries opted to bring many older players to Torino, and the aging rosters just couldn't cut it on the international stage. Both teams fell in the quarterfinals to Russia and Finland respectively. So heading into the Olympics in Vancouver, Canada and USA were looking for redemption. The hype surrounding the 2010 Canadian roster was unparalleled. They ditched the old guard and brought in some of the brightest young stars in the NHL. Players like Jonathan Tapes, Patrice Bergeron, Shea Weber, Corey Perry, and of course, the biggest star in the NHL, Sidney Crosby. Nicknamed Sid the Kid, Crosby was hockey's golden boy. Drafted first overall in 2005 with huge expectations, which he delivered on right away. Just six months prior to the Olympics, Crosby lifted his first ever Stanley Cup as the Pittsburgh Penguins beat the Detroit Red Wings in an incredible seven game series. This team was the polar opposite of the 2006 squad. Young, fresh faces hungry to win, backed by a few notable veterans with major Olympic experience. The USA squad, on the other hand, was not as well received. They still had some major talent on the roster, with stars like Zach Parise and Paul Stastny, backed by youngsters in Patrick Kane and Phil Kessel. But they had nowhere near the star power as Canada's roster, and thus had very low expectations heading into the tournament. But that all changed when the first puck dropped in February. Both Canada and USA were placed in the same group in the opening round. Canada started off strong with a dominant 8-0 win over Norway, while the US picked up an easy 3-1 win over the Swiss. But while USA easily dealt with the Norwegian team 6-1, Canada had major struggles against Switzerland, needing a shootout winner by Sidney Crosby to push past them. And in the rubber match between the two teams, it was USA who got the win staying in control for most of the game and edging out a 5-3 victory. USA topped the standings after group play, or as Canada finished in sixth, needing a victory against Germany to advance to the quarterfinals, which they got 8-2. The US win streak continued into the playoffs, beating Switzerland in a rematch, and then crushing a strong Finnish squad 6-1 in the semifinals. On the other side of the bracket, Canada cruised past Russia 7-3 and looked to do the same against Slovakia in the semifinals, taking an early 3-0 lead. But deep into the third period, the nerves started kicking in as a bad turnover in their own zone gave Slovakia a goal with 9 minutes left in the game. And just 4 minutes later, they gave up another, dropping their lead to just one. And with seconds left to play in the game, it looked like a third was inevitable. The puck rebounded to Slovakian star Pavel Dimitra with a wide open net, but Canadian goalie Roberto Luongo made an incredible pad save to keep the puck out, and the Canadians barely moved on to the finals. And so, it was Canada versus USA once again in the gold medal game. It was a rematch from the Salt Lake City finals just eight years prior, and their second meeting of the tournament. Even though Canada was supposed to be the favorite, it was USA who looked the stronger team, staying undefeated all the way to the finals. But for Canada, the stakes of this game couldn't be any higher. The Vancouver Olympics were a historic achievement for Canada. Going into the final day, they had already secured the medal lead, the first time in the nation's history with 13 gold medals. This was the last competitive event at the Olympics and so the men's hockey team had a chance to push that total to 14, breaking the Olympic record on home soil. And they got off to a great start. 12 minutes into the game, 21-year-old Jonathan Taves found the back of the net with a rebound goal to give Canada the early lead. And in the second, they'd extend that lead with another goal. 
this time from star Corey Perry. But the US battled back and got a quick response just five minutes later with a tip in from Ryan Kessler that just squeezed past Luongo. Both teams continued to have great chances on goal, but neither was able to get it past either keeper. So deep into the third, Canada still held on to their one goal lead. And with just three minutes left, Sidney Crosby stripped Eric Johnson in their own end and flipped the puck forward, giving himself a breakaway. The Golden Boy had a chance to ice the game right here and secure a historic win for his whole country. But an incredible defensive effort from Patrick Kane stopped Crosby from getting a shot off. But Canada still held a one goal lead and forced a desperate US team to pull their goalie with just 90 seconds remaining Things started off great for the Canadians. They got two huge clears right away and shaved the clock down at just 35 seconds. But just as all hope seemed lost, Patrick Kane fired a Hail Mary on net. The puck bounced off a stick and landed right in the arms of hero Zach Parise who buried his shot right into the back of the net with just 25 seconds left to play. Team USA was looking for their second miracle comeback in their Olympic hockey history, and their fate would be decided in one final overtime period. The action was constant, as both teams raced up and down the rink, putting any shot on net they could. The first big chance came from Canada four minutes in. Patrick Marlowe raced down the far side in a delayed two-on-one and put a shot on target that was stopped by Ryan Miller. A minute later, Danny Heatley had another great chance, but a clutch blocker save from Miller kept it out. Another chance just moments later for Rick Nash, and once again, Miller stops it. If the US managed to win this game, it's mainly because of the Buffalo keeper. He's been their best player all tournament, maintaining an astounding 0.95 save percentage through seven games. And today, he's added another 37 saves and kept his team in the game with great stops when they were down two goals. But with 12 minutes left in the game, Sidney Crosby skated his way into the zone and forced the puck into the corner. He got it back quickly, but lost control as it hit off the referee's skates. So he flicked the puck back down towards this man Jerome McGinley. Now, we haven't talked about Jerome McGinley at all so far, but he's been one of the most important members of this Canadian roster for a long time. While he was never able to claim a Stanley Cup during his time in the league, McGinley is one of Team Canada's greatest Olympic performers. At the 2002 Olympics, he secured two goals and got an assist in the finals against the US to secure Canada their first gold medal in 50 years. And just eight years later, Iggy is dominating once again, leading the tournament with five goals so far. But as he gets the puck on the goal line, he doesn't have much time to think. All he can hear to his left is Crosby yell out one word. And as he falls to the ground, Jerome McGinley fires off a no-look pass to the center of the ice. And who else is there to receive it than the golden boy himself? On the final day of these record-breaking Olympics, an entire country's hopes lay in the hands of just one man, and he doesn't disappoint. Yeah, well, 